before we talk about replacement decisions, and this is replacements for assets, so the big things that we buy, before we talk about replacement decisions, I have to refresh your memory on probably the most useful concept within replacement decisions, and that is the idea of annual worth. So as promised at the beginning of this course, the things that we learn in the first few chapters of our textbook are the tools that we need later on in the course. And I would say now we're at the later on period. And when we start to take a close look at the logic behind the decisions on when to replace an asset, we have to rely on our knowledge of annual worth. So the the idea of converting a whole bunch of of up arrows and down arrows on a cash flow diagram into an equivalent annual amount is key to what we're about to embark on. And maybe the best way to do it is like I like to start almost every discussion in engineering economics, and that's with the cash flow diagram. So we're going to talk about assets, and assets have typically two major arrows in their cash flow life. There's a big down arrow when you when you buy them, and then there's sometimes a little up arrow at the end of their life when you sell them. And you'll keep them for some number of years. We call this portion of the analysis of an asset's life, we call this portion the the capital portion fancy kind of word but the the capital basically relates to the investment money that was put in to making this asset part of the company so that's probably the best way i can justify the the use of the word capital but on the capital side of things what we're going to do is we're going to look at a a purchase price to buy something and then a projected resale value, and then we're going to convert that into an equivalent annuity, right? So, so this capital asset is going to have some equivalent cash flow diagram where the amount of this annuity is made up of this purchase price, this I'm not going to label it as an F like future value. I'm going to give it a value of S for salvage value. I'm going to take this P and this S and I'm going to use my time value of money skills to convert it to an equivalent annual amount. So we're going to give this magical annuity a new name. We're going to call it the equivalent annual cost. The word cost stays with us because these will end up being down arrows because the purchase price is going to be a larger number than the salvage value. And if you imagine doing this in two steps, I could take that P, convert it to an equivalent A. I could take the S, convert it to an equivalent A, and then take the net value at each point. And if I did that, I would end up with a, a, a net cost. So the EAC stands for the equivalent annual cost. You'll also sometimes uh, see it written like this, EUAC. Uh, some textbooks use EUAC, some use EAC. Don't be alarmed if on your quiz or your final exam, if you see an EUAC, it's just the same. This stands for equivalent uniform annual cost. The U is a little bit redundant in my opinion, so I tend to prefer just EAC, equivalent annual cost. And we call this the we call this the EAC capital. So we'll give it a little subscript cap. So so this is the EAC capital. Not the end of the story though. We also have operating and maintenance expenses related to running this asset. Maybe the asset is, you know, a, a printing machine, or maybe the asset is a uh, an excavator or whatever it is. So 
we're going to have another a whole other set of of uh, costs that we have to to deal with. And I didn't draw it exactly at the same elevation here, but let's say one two. The costs involved in operating the asset would be things like um, maybe like maintenance costs, or um, sometimes it could be you could consider it operating costs if you wanted to include those things, and they may or may not follow some kind of a pattern. They could be, you know, somewhat irregular like this, which makes it difficult to convert them into an equivalent annual amount, which is again our our goal. And so the goal would be to take all of these, we call them O and M for operating and maintenance costs, and convert them into an equivalent annual cost. And as you can imagine, this EAC, we actually call this the EAC O and M. And sometimes what we do is use, let's say, uh, an arithmetic gradient or a geometric gradient. So you can imagine maybe as the asset gets older, the operating maintenance costs maybe increase with its life. So, so it might be more typical for us to see operating and maintenance costs that, that maybe go like this. All right. So we could model this as, you know, as a, a G or maybe they could, they would actually increase at a certain rate of increase, in which case they, they could be modeled with a, a little G, but they're still costs. So they're still, they're still down arrows, right? So all of these are still down arrows. And then when we convert them to an equivalent annual annuity, we can then add them together with the capital component of the costs. So where we're headed in this, in this chapter is to find the EAC total. And the EAC total is simply the EAC cap plus the EAC O and M. And we're going to need all of those time value of money skills that we developed in the first portion of this course in order to be able to come up with the equivalent annual cost total for the purchase of a particular asset. Now, this I think is relatively understandable for most students. And if you're comfortable with how you convert P's and F's into A's or even discrete amounts, so if these are all different, you could bring them all back to the present and then add them all up and then convert them to annuity, an annuity. If you're familiar, if you're comfortable with all of those time value of money maneuvers, then getting these numbers isn't too, too bad. What you need to embrace as a concept is that as I change the number of years that I own an asset, I actually change the EAC. So let me, let me, oh, well, let me spoil it for you for a little bit. And I'll say, I'll say that, um, I could look at buying and then reselling an asset for a short amount of time. I could look at it maybe for two years, and then I could look at it three years. I could look at it four years. And for each of those, those time frames of owning the equipment, I would have a different resale value. I would have different operating and maintenance costs. And I'll, I'll have a different EAC total for different numbers of years for which I own the asset. And the spoiler alert comes in where I can say there is some magical number of years that minimizes the EAC total. I'll say that again because it's super important. There is some magical number of years for which you can own an asset that minimizes the equivalent annual cost of owning it. And perhaps, perhaps it's best illustrated with, with a, uh, an example. I, I like to think about, let's say a city like the city of Hamilton. Think about the police department in the city of Hamilton. 
you see police cars, you know, around town. And then every once in a while you say, hey, the, the police got a new car. And it'll be like a new make and model, or you notice it because it's got a different paint job. Well, how does the police force decide when it's time to buy a new car? You can bet they've got pretty good data when it comes to operating and maintenance costs on their cars, right? So they're per- they're probably pretty well organized and they have a good regiment for maintaining the vehicles. So they'd have really good data on how much maintenance costs are for owning the vehicles and they know what it is as the vehicle gets older and older. Of course, they know what the purchase price is and then they would also have some insight into how much they could sell their their used police cruisers for to probably become taxi cabs in New York City. Um, but they would have good data in, a, in, a, in order to sort of draw diagrams that look like this and then do an analysis whereby they can say, okay, Let's look at owning this model police cruiser for for a time period of three years. What's the EAC for a three-year ownership? And then let's look at owning it for four years. What's the EAC? Look at it for five years. What's the EAC? And then they'll come up to a number. They'll say, hey, it looks like four years has the minimum EAC because we've got a nice balance between not letting the cars get too old and having the maintenance costs go up And we still end up with a half-decent salvage value that helps with the EAC capital amount. So let's, after four years, let's replace the cars and get new cars. And then over a span of, call it 40 years, if the police force has always replaced their police cruisers at the optimum number of years, to minimize the EAC over that 40 year time frame, they've actually minimized the cost of keeping their police cruisers, you know, operating um, over that long, long time span. Th- this is the essence of this chapter. The magical number of years to own an asset, we call that the economic life of an asset. And we've used the term life already a couple of times in this course where we talk about, um, you know, the life of the asset is just meaning how long we're going to own it for. But the term economic life has a real meaning. And the economic life of an asset is the optimum number of years to own it for that minimizes the equivalent annual cost of owning it. Now, I already mentioned that in the operating and maintenance cost world, the longer you own an asset, typically the higher the operating and maintenance costs come. Like a car, like a police cruiser is is a good example. The older your car gets, the more you tend to have to spend on it. On the other side, the EAC capital, the longer you own a car, the lower the EAC capital goes. So, uh, you know, if you... If you forget about the salvage value for a second, it, it complicates it a little bit, but not too terribly much. You know, if you bought if you bought a car for ten thousand dollars and owned it for ten years and interest rates were zero, it would have an EAC of a thousand dollars, right? So the equivalent annual cost would be a thousand dollars. I'm just taking the purchase price, dividing it by ten years. So $10,000 divided by 10 years, it's $1,000 EAC. Remember I said interest rates are zero and there's no salvage value. Okay, that's a simple way. If I own that same car for 20 years, it's e- my EAC capital is only 500. So, so on this side of the EAC or in this term, the EAC capital term of the equation, the longer I own the asset, the lower my EAC capital goes. But on this side of the equation, the longer I own the equation, asset, the likely the higher my uh, my operating and maintenance cost goes. So it kind of makes sense that there is some optimum number of years to own an asset. So uh, so anyway, that's that's the introduction to the thinking behind this chapter in our course on replacement decisions.